So here is uh, lesson two in our unit on mechanics, and this is the first, the first of two lessons dealing with vectors. And let's recall from grade 11 that when we add vectors, we're always interested in finding what's called the resultant, and that's the sum of, of any series of vectors. And those could be velocities, they could be displacements, they could be forces, it could be accelerations, whatever. They're all vectors. We always draw the resultant vector from the tail of the first, to the tip of the last. All right, so it's where you started to where you ended. And in most vector addition problems, like the next one, we draw them out. You know, we need to know trigonometry very, very well. Um, we can always draw a scale diagram. We use a protractor, solve it that way. But, you know, drawing scale diagrams is inaccurate, uh, inaccurate and, and, uh, and very, very time consuming. So we usually most of the time we use mathematics to solve it. So here's an example, three displacement vectors, 0 0.5 kilometers north, 20 degrees east, 0 0.3 kilometers west, and 0 0.8 kilometers west, 50 degrees south, and find the re resultant vector of these three. So here's our first vector, 0 0.5 kilometers at an angle north, 20 degrees east. We can resolve this, the horizontal component of this vector, is 0 0.5, which is the magnitude, times the sine of 20. And if you're curious as to where this comes from, this is Sakatoa, okay, opposite over the hypotenuse for sine. And so the vertical component of this vector, 0 0.5 cos 20. Here we have 0 0.3 kilometers west, which actually doesn't need any resolving. So the horizontal component, which is the, the vector, is negative 0 0.3. The reason it's negative is because the sign convention that we're used to dealing with has north as positive and east as positive. West and south, then, are negative. So our final vector, then, magnitude of 0 0.8 kilometers west 50 degrees south, has negative 0 0.8 cos 50 as the horizontal component, and the vertical component, then, is 0 0.8 negative 0 0.8 sine 50. <clears throat> Once we have these three vectors resolved into their components, we can now add the horizontals together, and we can add the verticals together, so let's do that. The overall horizontal displacement is 0 0.5 sine 20 minus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.8 cos 50, and that gives us negative 0 0.64. And we can do the same thing with the vertical. There's just one last component, which is 0 0.5 cos 20 minus 0 0.8 sine 50, and we get negative 0 0.14. So what this is telling us is the overall vector now, the resultant vector, has these components as its horizontal and vertical parts, and so we can draw those. 0 0.64 west, 0 0.14 south, in order to report this vector, we need to find the magnitude of it, and we need to find the angle. And so the magnitude, of course, this is a right angle triangle, and we can find the magnitude by using our friend Pythagoras. 0 0.64 squared plus 0 0.14 squared, all under the square root sign, 0 0.66 kilometers. And the angle, we'll just use trigonometry, tan ratio, opposite over the adjacent, and we find that it's equal to 12 degrees. So we can report the displacement vector, the d total, as 0 0.66 kilometers west, 12 degrees south. Okay? So that is a review of what we did last year in grade 11. No problem. We've got that mastered. Should be a review. However, doing things that way is okay, but really we want to get to a point where we can represent vectors algebraically because it'll help quite a bit if instead of doing all this trig and everything like that, we can just represent vectors as equations. And that's what we're going to do. And that's the next step. And that's where we're going to push in grade 12 because it'll make our life far more accurate, far more easy, and far more elegant if we use algebraic vectors.
So let's start by looking at some vector that's dropped into our Cartesian plane. So here's our x and y axes, and let's drop a vector in there. Okay, this is the vector v, and it runs from the origin to some point p, and we don't really care what point that is. In this case, it would be 2, 3, right? There's an angle theta, and that's with respect to the horizontal x-axis. So we can represent this vector as a point, right? So the vector v in this case would be 2, 3. In general, let's say the point had coordinates a, b. In general, we could say that this vector is a, b, no problem. We could represent it as a line segment. The vector v is equal to o, p, the vector o, p, no problem. All the information that we have in this vector is now contained. How do we represent it, though, as an equation? And that's what we need, that's what we want to do. We, we really want to represent this as an equation. So we introduce these things called unit vectors, okay? And so again, here's an x, y um, axis coordinate system. And so <coughs> in two dimensions, we have two unit vectors, one for the horizontal direction and one for the vertical direction. In the horizontal direction, of course, that's the x-axis, and we got this little unit vector. And we call this guy i-hat, okay? Unit vectors have a magnitude of 1, and they're always in a specific orientation. So i-hat is always directed along the x-axis. It doesn't change, it doesn't move, it stays put. And all it does is indicate a direction, right? So the magnitude's one. So you can throw an i-hat beside any magnitude, and all it's going to do is represent that that's the direction that it's traveling in. And so in the vertical direction then, which is the y-axis, we've got another little guy, and we call him j-hat. Okay? And again, same thing, unit vector, magnitude of one, doesn't change the length of anything just gives us a direction, which is really nice. Because we can use these two vectors now. And we can write any vector in two space or in three space as what they call a linear combination of these i hats and j hats. Okay. Now, what is a linear combination? It basically just means that we can write any general vector as an equation and include i hat and j hat. So our vector v from the very beginning we could write as a times i hat, so it's a units in the i hat direction, plus b units in the j hat direction. And what we can do now is we can say, all right, well, it's actually not that tricky to prove it. We're not going to prove it. You can try and prove it for yourself. But the magnitude then of that vector v is a squared plus b squared, all under the square root sign. And the angle of that vector, um, which we denoted before, is, to, is the inverse tan of b over a. So we can see that. We can prove it if we wanted to, but we're not going to waste time doing that now. Just interesting side note, we do not have to limit our discussion of vectors to 2D or to 2 space. In 3 space, there is a unit vector that's along the z axis. We call it k hat. And then so of a general vector in three space would be a i hat plus b j hat plus c k hat. And that would be kind of in three dimensions. We're not going to deal too much with three dimensions in this case. We're going to mainly stick in two dimensions. Um, but it's nice to know that it is there because there will come a time in the very near future, if you take a first year course in physics, when you will need to know what k hat is and what it is all about. So here's a little example. What is the magnitude and angle of this vector v, negative 2, 3. Express it as an equation and find the magnitude and the angle. So, well, first of all, as an equation, we have a is equal to negative 2 and b is equal to 3. Because this is negative 2 units in the x direction and 3 units in the z direction. Sorry, excuse me, the y direction. And so we can say this vector v can be expressed as negative 2 i hat plus 3 j hat. And so we want to know the magnitude. Well, to find the magnitude, we use our formula. The magnitude of v 
is equal to the root of a squared plus b squared, which is equal to the root of 2 squared plus 3 squared, which if we add it up is root 13. So that's the magnitude of the vector v. To find the angle then, we use theta, or our angle is equal to the inverse tan of b over a, 3 over negative 2, which is equal to negative 56 degrees if you put it in your calculator and then you say, um, 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 hold on. We need to be careful about where this vector is and about what it is. So we say, okay, hold on one second. Where is this vector located? And what is negative 56 degrees all about? Is it negative 56 as measured from positive x or neg negative x? Or is it, like, what quadrant is it in? Well, if we actually locate this vector, we say, well, it's negative 2 in the x direction and plus 3. What we would say is, oh, that's in quadrant 2. It's in the second quadrant. So, really, the correct answer would be in this upper quadrant. And 56 degrees would be measured upwards from the negative x-axis. And so we'd have to say, okay, well then what is, you know, that angle specifically? We just need to locate it and diagram where that angle is. <coughs> so last but not least, we went through the whole process at the beginning of this lesson of adding up three unit, uh, three vectors, excuse me. We went, we had to resolve them all. We had to look at... Um, basically adding the horizontal components together, adding the vertical components together, and so on and so forth. Finally, in the end, putting everything back together. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a way of representing vectors where we didn't have to go through all that? And of course, that's the beauty that, that these types of vectors give us. If I want to add up d1 plus d2 plus d3, and I'm given unit vector notation, all I need to say is we add the horizontal or the i-hat components together and the vertical or the j-hat components separately. Okay, so we want to keep the i-hats together, we want to keep the j-hats together, and that's it. So in this case, my total displacement vector is 2 i-hat plus 2 i-hat minus 3 i-hat, and we kind of sandwich those together. 2 j-hat minus 4 j-hat plus 5 j-hat. And we sandwich those together. And so in the end, my overall displacement vector is 1.0 i hat plus 3.0 j hat. And that's it. That's all you need to do. So what this vector actually looks like is what's drawn here. And of course, we could find the magnitude of this if we wanted. We could find the angle if we wanted. All these things are included and enclosed. So we can leave this 1.0 i-hat plus 3.0 j-hat as our final answer because it includes all the information we need. It may not be readily evident. We may not be able to see it um, right away, but it's all there. And this is a much simpler way of adding these vectors. And that is the first lesson on algebraic vectors.